Pricey Alliance, how Trump is nailing European NATO members to the wall. NATO members express deep concerns about the future of the alliance amid Washington's row over the EU's failure to meet the 2% of GDP NATO requirement and Donald Trump's upcoming meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin on July 16, U.S. President Donald Trump has stepped up criticism of European NATO members ahead of a summit gathering of NATO heads of state and government that will be held on July 11-12 in Brussels, Belgium. Europe far more than it does the U.S. By some accounts, the U.S. is paying for 90% of NATO, with many countries nowhere close to their 2% commitment. On top of this, the European Union has a trade surplus of $151 million with the U.S., with big trade barriers on U.S. goods. No, I'm going to tell NATO, you got to start paying your bills, Trump told the rally in Montana on July 5. The United States is not going to take care of everything. We are the schmucks that are paying for the whole thing. Earlier, the U.S. president singled out Germany, the EU's flagship, for not honoring its NATO spending commitment. Germany pays 1%, slowly, of GDP towards NATO, while we pay 4% of a much larger GDP. Does anybody believe that makes sense? We protect Europe, which is good, at great financial loss, and then get unfairly clobbered on trade. Change is coming, Trump tweeted on June 11th. In 2014, NATO member states agreed that they would spend 2% of GDP on the alliance's needs. As of yet, only five countries have met this obligation, the US, the UK, Poland, Greece and Estonia. Washington remains one of the major contributors of the alliance, providing up to 22% of NATO's budget. It appears that Trump's rebuke has borne fruit as Paris and Berlin have reportedly pledged to meet the 2% of GDP target in the coming years. Thus, France is about to bolster its military spending over the next seven years under a new draft bill. For its part, Germany has vowed to boost its NATO spending to 1.5% of GDP by 2024. However, it has not prevented German Defense Minister Ursula von der Leyen from backfiring on Trump. You can easily spend 2% of your national GDP on defense while at the same time not contributing anything to NATO, do not participate in missions, do not participate in actions, do not participate in reinsurance missions, she stated, addressing Washington. Meanwhile, some countries also expressed vocal discontent with the U.S. president's criticism. Norwegian Defense Minister Frank Bach Jensen stated in his letter to the Associated Press that Norway stands by its decision of the NATO summit in 2014 and is following up on this and is spending far beyond 2% of GDP on new military equipment. For his part, Belgian Prime Minister Charles Michel underscored that Belgium participate as in many military operations with its NATO allies and it is this government that decided to end the systematic reduction of defense spending, Trump's looming withdrawal at the same time, NATO member states are expressing fears that Trump may reduce the number of U.S. troops deployed in Europe over the spending row. In late June 2018, The Washington Post reported that Pentagon officials were considering options to pull U.S. troops out of Germany. According to the newspaper, either some or all of the 35,000 U.S. troops stationed there could be relocated within Europe or completely withdrawn. The assumption was later rejected by U.S. Ambassador to NATO K. Bailey Hutchison. Members of the Transatlantic Alliance fear that the upcoming meeting between Russian President Vladimir Putin and U.S. President Donald Trump may result in redrawing the security landscape across Europe, the Telegraph noted. They are also concerned about the potential reduction in the number of joint U.S.-European exercises on the continent. The rift between the U.S. and Europe is rapidly deepening amid the NATO spending controversy and the U.S.-driven tariff war. Copyright AP Photo, Charek Sokolovsky American soldiers attend a official welcome ceremony for the U.S. troops in Zagin, Poland, Thursday, Jan. 12, 2017 Washington's own military spending burden increasing the Trump administration's demand that NATO members spend more on defense is understandable in light of the U.S.'s own growing military spending burden.
According to National Priorities Project NPP, estimates, the U.S. military spending would continue its rise, up 4% from $700 billion in 2018, already an 8% increase over the last Obama military budget, to $726 billion in 2023. By 2023, the final year included in President Trump's budget request, military spending would make up 65% of the federal discretionary budget, compared to 54% in 2018. The non-governmental organization focused on U.S. defense expenditures reported in February 2018. The Trump administration is boosting military spending at the expense of social, educational and ecological programs. The country's military-industrial complex keeps absorbing a large part of the U.S. budget, at the same time raising questions regarding its efficiency and transparency. The Lockheed Martin F-35 project has repeatedly prompted criticism for going 50% over its original budget, which makes Bloomberg ask rhetorically whether the endeavor is a trillion-dollar mistake. Yet another controversy was triggered by the country's Zumwalt-class destroyers as the government had to pay $22.5 billion to produce just three ships. Meanwhile, the U.S. economy appears to be in bad shape, given its soaring national debt, which has crossed the $21 trillion mark, and growing federal deficit, let alone the indebtedness all over the country's economy.